Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at another game between Alpha Zero playing on the white end and Stockfish. So, how would Alpha Zero handle the French defense? Let's see. First off, what variation? Steinitz, Alpha Zero grabbing some space, lending some support to it. Black undermines the white center and captures at the first available moment. White, on the other hand, does not immediately recapture. In fact, this guy here doesn't take another step until move 29. What follows is knight to b5, and with this, I have many points to share. For one, it's the queen knight who's now prepared to recapture on d4. It's the queen knight who's currently striking or eyeing the weakest square in black's camp. Because the queen knight is going to be recapturing on d4. The king knight, his responsibility? Secure e5. In the event of f6, well, he's there to reinforce that point. And one final note, and no less significant than the things I've already shared. What new white piece or pawn is now free to move because of white's last move? This guy here on c2. He's now prepared to take one step to support a piece on d4. This is significant, okay? Being able to recapture on d4 with a pawn means you take away c5 from multiple black pieces. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. This detail about the pawn, one day, controlling c5, uh, influences black's space disadvantage. Okay, if white is able to take away a key square from black when it's already fighting with this space disadvantage, that only compounds black's issue. Continuing, bishop to b4, bishop d2. This would be a desirable exchange for white. Keep in mind this is black's good bishop. Bishop c5 is met with b4. Highly committal. Strikes at the bishop, but look at the weaknesses left behind. On the other hand, are these weaknesses that black can exploit? Continuing, bishop e7. Knight b takes d4. Knight c6 is met with c3. a5 is met with b5. White has just acquired a little bit more space. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes knight. Here we go. Let's just pause for a moment. This exact thing just happened. Pawn controlling c5. The question is, how does black complete development? Now, if you just look at it quickly, many would say, well, I'll play b6 and then bishop b7. And to those who maybe go forward with the plan like that, I have a follow-up question for you. What in the world are your bishop and knight going to do? Your bishop from b7 is doing nothing, staring at his own pawn, and the knight from d7 is completely boxed out by the pawn. What is his future? How does black solve this? We're only 13 moves in, and black is already experiencing difficulties. What is played is knight b6, aha. Uh -huh. So the knight makes use of b6 first to sink into c4, and only later will this pawn move. But still, the bishop on b7, um, the bishop on d7, his future is uncertain. There's not really a good role for the light square bishop. The knight, he is productive. He drops into c4. Bishop d3, knight takes bishop. The knight actually has the choice at this stage which bishop to take. You could take the bishop directly, the dark square bishop, or play knight to b4 and win the light square bishop. In the game, black goes for the dark square bishop. If queen takes knight, that's no good. Queen's gone. Bishop b4. 
And how many of you would take with the knight here? Those are the only other options, right? King takes knight. Knight takes knight. Taking with the knight, you keep open the option to castle. Not alpha zero. King takes knight in the game. Wow. Bishop d7. King to e3. That's his home. He's secure here. This is a rock-solid center. And how do you get at the king? Look at the bishop. Beautifully tied in with the central structure. The knight on f3 adds some very nice security for the king as well. It's a closed center. Play is going to ensue on the wings. The question is basically thrown to the black king. Where will you go? You're going to go queenside, where I have some space here? That may not even be possible. Soon white will control the c-file, or the c8 square. You're going to go kingside, and compete with the bishop and the knight that are just a moment away from pouncing in that sector? White has space on the kingside as well. White is basically controlling this whole board. That's what's going on here. Okay, these two pawns here, b5 and e5, are having a great, great influence in uh, the black position. And this guy on d7, I just, I don't know what his future is. The light square bishop, I don't know what he should be doing. b6, g4 follows, h5, and queen to g1. There's a couple of ways you could look to support the g4 point. The queen is the better one. Why? Well, black would like to play g6 here. Start to control some light squares, because guess who's not around to help control the light squares on the king side, really? This guy. He's still imprisoned. He's stuck behind his pawn chain. Okay, if you could pick him up and put him outside of the pawn chain, somewhere over here, it's a much different story. But he's still... Uh, he's a he's a very bad bishop. Now, you can't play g6 because it's the queen that's on g4. There's sacrifices on g6 that would follow. The queen sweeping in with a check, so... Uh, g6 you could play if it was the rook that was on g4, but not here. So, bishop f8, there was a punch thrown at g7. Black has to go backwards to defend h4, queen to e7, rook on h to c1, taking control over the only open file. Why this rook? Well, I can't be 100% on that, but at least you won't be fearful of queen a3 move. So, g6 follows. There, there aren't any sacrifices now. Things are a little bit different with the queen on the 7th rank. She can block a check on f7. So white now prepares to double. Now what does the black king do? Is, you know, there's two questions, really. Uh, one for the light square bishop, what's your future, and where's your home going to be, king? It's difficult to determine. So black sets out to exchange one rook. Rook c8. One rook is off. And now the white rook is invading. Bishop b7 follows. If you capture the pawn in this position, the rook is going to get trapped. For example, chop, king c7. Where does he go? So he has to give himself up for the bishop, or this bishop, something like this. But uh, white wants no part of that, and instead drops back. There's some success that white just gained with this little sequence here. Playing to c6 and having black reply bishop to b7. Is this a developing move? Uh, I think m most would most would view this last move as, oh, I'm developing. I, I just went from the 8th rank to the 7th rank. That's actually an underdeveloping move. There's nothing going on here. Again, this, this bishop's future has to be like some kind of zigzag towards the king's side, and I, I just don't even see how that pans out, but... The thing is, when he's on b7, he's staring at this pawn. There's no future if he's on d7. He's staring at the b5 pawn. There's no good future for him. 
So, continuing, we have king to d7. It's tough to suggest something for black. This is, uh, it's like white can find, uh, continually make improvements, and black has to take this sit and wait approach. There's, there, there's, there's no good moves here. Knight g5, he's finally taking another step, move 29. And with this, things are heating up on the black structure. A lot of pressure on these squares. Bishop e7, and pop quiz of the game. What move would you play here as white? If you'd like to, pause the video, see what move alpha 0 played next. Okay, well, I gave you a little bit of a hint by pointing out pressure on these squares. Yeah, one of these pawns gets snipped. Bishop takes g6. Now, if the pawn takes the bishop, that's going to run into mate. Let's just see what happens if the bishop's captured. Mate in three. Chop. Chop. And we'll finish up with the cool mate. e6. Okay, so we can't take that guy. But you can take the knight first. Okay, this is adding some security to e6. And only then take the bishop. So how are things looking now? What just happened here? White gave up a minor piece and only got a pawn for it. But is this really a minor piece? No. It does not have a good role in this current pawn structure. Continuing, f5 hits. Okay, and with f5, uh, you can't capture that pawn. There's two ways you could capture it. You shouldn't. Capture in either direction. Capturing like this, the queen slips into g7. And it's immediately winning. If the king moves, that's mate. If the queen blocks, your rook watches from the sidelines. You can't take with this guy. What about this one? Well, that would allow queen f6, and she's now slipping in to the b6 square. Or the d6 square. That too would be decisive. Any other option? Well, let's see the game move. In the game, we had rook to g8, and now queen h6. She's trying to get to the 7th rank. Black is there to secure that. f6 now, now hits. Talk about a space advantage. This bishop is non-existent, keep in mind. Okay? This bishop is not doing anything. And I was pointing out this little zigzag thing. Well, he's going to have to zigzag a whole lot more before he can maybe get on a diagonal, but then you... Uh, th does black have the time for that? Okay. Let's see how play continues. Black is once again having to resort to this back and forth passing type moves. I mean, what do you do here? King to d8 is the move. Something else? The queen backs up? queen is slipping in. There's only, there's only one move to test out here, really. The only, the only productive-looking move would be something like, well, let's challenge this rook. Okay? Let me just show why this doesn't work. The rooks are exchanged, queen to h8, and this queen is just killing everything. If the, if the queen moves, we give a check and then push through. You'd have to move the bishop, and then the queen could slide over here, or even the king could start to inch up like this and slowly make progress, win this pawn, and then you have two passed pawns. Again, this bishop doing nothing. Therefore, black resorts to shuffling. Contesting the open c file, no good. King to d2 is opening up the e3 square. White is looking for a quick queen transfer. Making a little waiting move first with rook to c1. Before the queen steps foot on e3, white wants that king to go back to d8. King d8 only now queen to e3. She's observing two key squares, possibly preparing to, bat, uh, to form a battery on the c-file, or get to a3 to slice in and uh, coordinate well with the pawns on e5 and f6. Black rules queen a3 out, but now in comes queen c3, looking at queen c7 ideas. Black takes this as a, uh, well, it's, 
that goes for this idea, right? To get the queens off. Makes use of this possibility. Queens are now gone. It's simplified a bit more, but this pawn can now be scooped up in a few moves. And, uh, well, I keep pointing it out. That bishop is not doing anything. Rook g1 ties the rook down. One of the black pieces is going to have to be responsible for this guy, who could bolt at any moment to score a touchdown. So, just two steps away. That's serious. King c3 follows. That pawn is picked up. King b4. He's 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 making his way with this uh, little zigzag thing, but it's just much too late at this stage. Uh, I like this rook a1 move, by the way. Rook a1, and only then a5. White wants to recapture on a5 with the rook. In the event of pawn takes on a5, the rook wants to recapture. Why is this the case? Well, the king... He doesn't want to recapture. He wants to move towards the center. He wants to sneak in by way of c5, d6, e7, and guess what? That's what happens in the game. It's, I mean, this this king invasion, first slipping up here, running around like this, and then sneaking in, it's just really beautiful to observe this kind of play. King b7, king c5. King d6, king e7, and this is the last move of the game. After g5, pawn takes pawn, and there's just no uh, good approach here for Team Black. So I'm not sure uh, what more to add. This is where uh, Stockfish resigns. Um, what more to say about this game? Stockfish. Everybody should know there is an issue with the bad bishop in the French defense. You didn't solve this problem, and you undervalued the great space advantage both b5 and e5 gave me. The spatial advantage allowed me to efficiently transfer my pieces from one side of the board to the other. What good is having a bishop on the board if it's unproductive, too weak, too slow?